Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Matthew Miller, the Fedora Project Leader, and this is a Fedora Council video meeting. We do these about once a month. We meet more often than that, usually in IRC, and we try to make our business not actually be meeting driven, but we found it useful to do video things just for the high bandwidth exchange and, you know, because it's something to share with everybody else afterwards in an easier way than just a text log. Uh, so we do these about once a month or we check in with some part of the project that's doing something interesting or uh, maybe needs help or has something cool to share. Um, today I have my cat Izzy. She's right off the screen here purring very loudly. Um, she may get up and put her butt in front of the camera or do other cat things at some point. Or if my screen starts wobbling, it's because she's decided that it needs love. So that's going on. Also, if I'm distractedly petting the cat, that's that's. That's what's happening today. Um, but in addition to that, uh, we have Mo Duffy, who's the design team lead, uh, sharing something really exciting with us. Uh, Mo and the design team have been working on a new logo for our project for the last, I don't know, two years now. And we started a while ago. Um, then we ended up getting um, stalled with some legal things. Those are all resolved and we're ready to go. So. Um, Take it away, Mo. Sure. And I wouldn't say they're all resolved. I would say that we have <laughs> to, is it, what, a 12 to 18 month period before we sort of know is that? I think yeah, that's right. I think with, without going into too much detail, we are clear to start using this new logo. And, uh, and if things are fine after a while, then it will definitely be okay. I guess that's. Yeah. Okay, so I am going to share my screen now, and so you can see the logo. Um, and I just wanted to give a tiny bit of background around this, although you probably already are all well aware of this. Um, like Matthew mentioned, this has been a long-term project. Um, it started in October 2018. Um, the ticket is Design Ticket 620, and I think it just started as a conversation me and Matthew had because I, I like to complain a lot and I work with the Fedora logo um, all the time and it definitely, the current one we are using right now, not the new one, has a number of deficiencies in the design. The the number one deficiency being that you can't ever produce the Mark one color. Um, and our kind of kludgy answer to that was if you need it one color, just use the letters and omit the mark. But what's the point of the logo mark if you can't use it? And um, things kind of came to a head. I don't, was it that Christmas break? I, I know the conversation started in October, 2018. I think at the same time we started talking about it, um, the font awesome, was it font awesome? They, they have yeah. um, one color font based marks and they were trying to add all the Linux distros and somebody helpfully um, added a version of the Fedora logo to that library that was not okay <laughs> with our guidelines. Um, so that was sort of a, wow, I'm celebrating Christmas and trying to fix this. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, really, you know, that was we, like more motivation to fix it, right? <laughs> we appreciated them adding our logo there. It's useful for people to be able to refer to Fedora in a way, but we also want them to use something that looks kind of like an official logo rather than something right. that clearly was not. Uh, right. And at, I mean, it's great that, to also, get the exposure. I looked at the our logo usage guidelines, um, which still say they are in draft status. That's the c current logo guidelines have been in draft status for, uh, I don't know, 14 years, something like that. Um, so I was like, why are this in draft status? And that kind of led to a, a whole this whole conversation, yeah. Yeah, so um, that kind of went on for a while. It it was done completely in the public in terms of like the iterations of the logo and feedback and I did a couple of really detailed blog posts about sort of the issues. I'm sure you're familiar with those, but if not, feel free to reach out to me and I'll give you pointers to everything. Um, stuff kind of stalled in like May, 2019. For various reasons, there, as Matthew had alluded to, there was some, you know, once you kind of come up with a design you like, then you have to start the legal process. And unfortunately, we have to treat that as a black box. We can't really go into detail on that. But things kind of stalled for a while. And I think it was like July, this the past July 2020, where we kind of, I think Matthew kind of tried to pick it back up and was like, hey, so how are things going? 
Um, and since then, we've kind of been working on it, um, trying to get it ready. And um, so, okay, so some information now that might be useful for you to have. Let me just open up document here. So one of the things that we've put together, um, it was me and Matthew and Marie and Ben um, put together sort of a timeline um, that is approved by our trademark lawyers that um, for rolling out the logo. We can start using the logo immediately. Um, and we're not looking to destroy any existing materials with the old logo. We would actually like to keep using the old logo. Um, Marie has been looking at creating a Fedora Classic logo that could be used in sort of those applications too and kind of adding the classic to minimize confusion. But um, in particular, like we, we don't have to use the old logo type with the lettering. It's just the old logo mark we're looking to keep into use. Um, I'm trying to think what else. So like as, as time goes on now that we have the approval to start rolling it out, um, when I get new logo requests coming in, I'm using the new logo almost by default. Um, and I think there were a couple of items we were looking at producing right away. I'm not 100% sure. I don't think that uh, Marie can probably fill everyone in more than better than I can. But the one thing we had talked about was a small 1,000 unit run of Fedora Classic beverage mugs or tumblers. Um, Want to do another this. one was it's in progress. A Fedora. Okay, cool. And the other one was a Fedora diversity sticker sheet with the new logo. Um, I don't know if I, I kind of remember producing that, like the thing I'm sharing right now is from that, but I don't actually see the ticket for it. So I don't know what happened, but there was supposed to be a small run of that with a hundred items. I'm going to have to track that down. But anyway, so that was sort of like what we're looking to do out the gate. Like these are two things we'd like to produce just to start to kick things off. And then on a as needed process, like immediately, and honestly, like for the past maybe couple of weeks or so, um, as new promotional material requests come in, like the thing that I'm showing right now is a version of that diversity sticker set that we use. And that was used for, um, I think the name of the conference was Open Source 101 or something like that. This is the banner for our virtual booth for that conference. So that was produced with the new logo. Um, and then any, any other kind of graphics or like, I have a few things I can show off here. Um, we had a internet or internet of things, IOT Fedora spin sticker request. So you might not even really notice because one of the things about the way that the new logo is designed is the word mark, um, unlike the old word mark, which was a proprietary font called Bryant 2, the new word mark is based on Comforta, which is a open font license, open source font. Um, and it's sort of a drop-in replacement. So even though it's like a different set of um, glyphs, it, you kind of, you can tell like, or you can't really tell unless you know to look that it is actually the new logo mark. But anyway, so that was produced with the new mark. Um, we had a request for Ask Fedora, and I've been working with the outreachy applicant on that. And um, well, I, I'll go into more in depth on that um, in a little bit when I start talking about sub logos, but I'm trying to see if there was anything produced. Oh yeah, Fedora Easy Fix. It's another sub logo, but see that that new logo was produced using the new mark in it. So um, we've already started as new requests come in. We were gonna have to do them anyway, so we'll do them with the new logo. We're not actively seeking to go back and update things yet, but we have a timeline for that. So I've already missed the first timeline milestone here. Um, I was hoping to get new Fedora logos into the Fedora-logos package in time for beta, but due to various circumstances, I was not able to do that, but I hope that's okay. Um, I've actually been working on um, that a little bit more this morning. Um, I do have one pull request on Fedora logos right now. Um, I'm probably gonna have, that pull request is for, um, show that to you. And please feel free if you have any questions, like feel free to interrupt or whatever. Um, this is the new um, web server test page. It will pop up for Apache, for Nginx, and for Caddy. This shows it in Caddy mode. It, 
the, the way that the vendor logo works for the web server is very interesting. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this is packaged in Pound or in Fedora Dash logos. Um, I have the pull request already for this filed. Um, and so I think the next pull request will just be for all the various logo files. I'm just trying to track down which file goes to which thing. Like all of this stuff is done by renaming and moving things in a spec file for Fedora logos. And sometimes things aren't where you expect them to be. So it's just been a process unraveling that, which is why like you would think, oh, well, it's just images. You just update the images and you're done. No, it's a little more complicated. So I'm, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. Um, so anyway, so that was sort of the Fedora 34 beta milestone that I missed. So that will be Fedora 34 final. We will have the new logos updated in the distro itself. Um, and the approach that I am taking to that is as light a touch as possible. So I'm constraining it to having the logos fit the exact dimensions as the old files. And if the old files had a specific color, like for example, if the Fedora font was in white, then the new one's gonna be in white. If the old one was in color, then the new one's gonna be in color. And I'm trying to match the amount of space they take up within the pixel dimensions of the file as closely as possible, because I'm just trying to minimize any issues whatsoever. It's the most conservative approach, I think. Um, yeah, that makes sense, because some of these files, we know what they are and where they're used. Other ones, they're just, they've been there for 10 years, and packages are probably referring to them, and we don't know how or why. So this minimal change is probably the best way. For people yeah, who don't and know this, all of the logos that use our trademark are all supposed to be in one package, the Fedora logos package, which I believe, uh, Tom, you are still the owner of, um, which which is awesome. Um, and so that way, um, if you want to make a non-branded Fedora package, um, you can, uh, uh, Fedora spin or respin or remix, you can take that out and um, that can get rid of all of the branding and replace that. Um, also, it means that all of our trademark restrictions are constrained, hopefully, um, or at least mostly to this one package. Sorry for the diversion. Yeah, arrow. it's all right. And there's like cruft in here. So that's that's another pull <laughs> request. I'm gonna do a separate pull request to remove the cruft. Like there's some stuff that was specific to like Fedora 7 in here. And it's just sort of sitting around and I kind of hope this one is uh this one is nine, Fedora nine. I guess yeah, that was not core at that time. So um yeah, a lot of cruft. So there'll be a separate pull request for the cleaning. Um there'll be a pull request for the new logos, and there already is a pull request for the the web server stuff. And the web server stuff got complicated too, because in the process I noticed, hey, we're still using the pre-2016 version of the Apache logo, oops. So um, I'm trying to fix that stuff along the way as well. So anyway, so that's that. Okay, so to add on, so the Fedora 34 final will have the updated logos and Fedora logos, hopefully. Um, part of that work too, I might mention. So you might notice, maybe not, that this page is using Montserrat, which is the open source font that we use for a lot of Fedora materials for several years now. It's sort of our official font. Um, we wanted this page to be in Montserrat, but Montserrat's not something that's generally installed by default. Um, so the idea that we have here is Luya um, heroically made a very tiny web fonts package for Montserrat, and we're going to add it. Well, I'm going to propose we add it as a soft dependency on the, fa the Fedora logos package. Um, it's very small. I think it's if I remember correctly, it's like 400K, um, something like that. <laughs> Your PR it's, it's has been big. approved. <laughs> yeah, so I, you, Oh yeah, you can't see, so, you can't see the faces. No, oh. I can't see anybody. I'm yeah, just Tom, Tom, to a gray. Tom gave you a thumbs up on that one, so. Oh, okay, awesome, awesome, okay. So, so hopefully we'll have like this nice slick Apache page that nobody sees, but that's okay. Um, so there's that. Okay, so then for F34 final, on top of the new logos, we're looking at updating the social media properties. So, you know, your Twitters, the whatever else, Facebook group, um, that kind of stuff that Fedora maintains. Yeah. I have to um, probably ask around in the Mindshare team and just see if there's any that we need to catch that I don't have on the radar for that. But 
we're looking to change the logos over on or just around release day as sort of like a nice kind of coordinated launch. Um, ask.fedoraproject.org, um, we're hoping we'll have the new logo. Matthew actually very kindly has already put one of our drafts up and one of the outreachy applicants um, created this mark. I think it's kind of cool. Um, and again, I'll, I'll talk about sort of marks and sub logos and stuff in a little bit after I get through the timeline. But there's an example of one, take a look, you know. Um, I would like start.fedora to also have the new logo, um, but of course being a designer, I can't let well enough alone. So I started mocking up a new one, but looking at the timeline, I don't think we're gonna have time to get this in. I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna prioritize everything before this. If I have time to implement this, great. But if not, then tough cookie. Um, I'll just in place update the Fedora logo, which will look something like this. So I would update the color of this bar and just swap in the new logo. So I mean, either way, I kind of like the idea of a nice fresh look, but at the same time, we're taking a very conservative approach in the distro itself. So I don't think it's the end of the world if we just stick with what we have for now with the new logo. And then maybe for F35, look at making things, you know, changing them up a little bit. So that's that. Um, and then what was the other one? Let's see. So it's ask, start, oh, get Fedora. So that would be... This one is gonna be a quick swap o change I think. Um, so we're basically changing the logo here and then all of these sub logos that have, it's just the text that's getting updated, the text up here. I, I really wanna do something more exciting up here, but again, that's gonna be lowest priority and if I get to it, I get to it. Um, and then Fedora Magazine. Um, I was looking to update Fedora Magazine too. It's sort of right now in the plan, it's the lowest priority because Fedora Magazine sort of operates a little bit separately than Fedora. Like we've given it its own sort of a little bit more unique brand. Like it uses a different font and stuff like that. I do have a mock-up for um, a suggestion as to how we could change it. So it's this one um, right here. And I can pop that out if it's more handy. And that one's unique because you use the gradient there in this. Yeah, that's one of the tricks I like of this new design too, is you can do like a little gradient or kind of a, it gives you a lot more flexibility for different treatments because you can do it one color, it's just one shape. So, and I, I felt like that, and it's also using the darker blue, which is the same as our dark blue today. The, the color that is changing is the lighter blue. It's a little bit brighter than the one we have now, which is a little darker and more purpley. Um, this one is a little bit more cyan and it's brighter. Um, but I thought, well, if we also have magazine use the dark blue, it also gives a little bit more differentiation so it can feel like its own, it's its own thing, but it's in the family. It's like a second cousin maybe instead of a first cousin. I don't know. Anyway, so I do have something ready to go for that. I, I really just need to, and I probably should have done this a while ago. Um, I need to float it with that team, make sure they're on board with it, make changes that they want. But again, that's sort of towards the bottom of the stack, number one, because I don't think it's as critical because we treat it as a separated brand, but also number two, it's the website, it's not in the distro. So the timelines are a little looser than they would be to get something packaged. Okay, so then after F34, um, we're looking at updating fedoraproject.org, which right now is the media wiki, um, and then the Fed menu logo, and there's like a panda in Fed menu. I'm thinking we either update that or just get rid of it entirely, because I don't think, like our apps are kind of starting to turn it off. Um, and I don't know if you know what I'm talking about here. Um, I don't, does anybody know the name of an app that uses it? I can't even think. Does Koji have it? I think it's it? on Koji. It's not. Let me see if, is it? Okay, let me look if it's here. See. It's uh, it. HyperKitty right. uses it, I think. Oh, okay, let's see. Do, 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 do. Here. Yes, okay, it's this little Fedora logo in the corner. And it has a panda. So, I love I mean, the panda, look, though, so. Yeah. But we have a new panda coming too. 
But anyway, yeah, so those could be updated or we'll get rid of Fed Menu. I don't really know. As time goes on, I mean, like half these links are broken anyway, so I don't know. Yeah, um, I think yes. just dropping the new logo into it is probably the best approach. Uh, yeah. Okay, and then for F35. was deprecated as well, so that might be worth double checking too. I don't think Infra is interested in maintaining. Just Fed Menu generally? Yeah, I think Fed menu. The the intent is to, yeah. to deprecate or retire. Yeah, yeah. So okay. Anyway, so then that's the post F34 plan is updating Fedora Project at org and Fed menu, and then for F35, um, we'll look at spins and labs. Those are something that I I kind of feel like we have a new get Fedora coming. I don't think it's something. I mean, and I wouldn't even say, oh, my God, let's just, like, completely redo it again because I'm really sick of redoing it. But I think that it might be time to sort of better integrate some of these things rather than having, like, a separate spin site. Bring it back into Get Fedora, like, have it closer so it's, like, under the Get Fedora slash rather than its own thing. So F35, I have update spins and labs, but that might manifest as bring spins and labs over into the get fedora site and sort of retire or redirect those existing urls so there's that um the community blog see and that's you, you might see here too um the community blog is sort of community facing fedora project.org is community facing so the community facing stuff is lower on the stack than the stuff that somebody would see if they install fedora and as a as an initial fedora user what they see before they become a contributor. So that's why like ask and start and get fedora.org and Fedora Magazine in part are sort of bumped to the top of the list. Then stuff like um, bins and labs, which are a little bit, you have to get a little bit deeper into the weeds, I think to use those. Yeah. And then um, the community blog is community facing um, and then discussions media that's accounts. the main discourse. Yeah. Yeah, those are bumped to the top because users would see them. Um, discussion, I mean, you could argue, I would say ask is really the discourse that users would gravitate to first because they're looking for help. And then as they become a contributor, they might move to discourse, discussion.fedoraproject.org. So that's why that's an F35 timeline too. But again, these it's not gonna be, it's not gonna like hit us and like, oh my gosh, what do we do? I think I actually have, oh, it's not here. I do have a file somewhere with an updated community blog. Um, logo and it's again because of the way the logo was designed and it's very easy to swap it in so I'm not really concerned about any of this being I mean most of it is just figuring out where's the repo how do I do the pull request like that is the difficult part that logo is not the difficult part um, oh, one thing I wanted to note was that when you're talking about the spins and labs you're talking about those websites but actually in the like if you install KD plasma desktop that's going to use the Fedora logos file for things. And so that will actually show the updated logos with Fedora 34 as well. So it's not, those That's aren't, right. uh, th those different uh, yeah, actual things you can install are also all being updated. They're not being left to last or anything like that. Yeah, it's just the website, which is honestly better integrated. So, okay. So then also in the Fedora 34 timeline, one of the things that we talked about um, for the Fedora Classic logo, so, where we, we had this idea where, you know, if you're like an old timer in Fedora, um, and, and I don't know, like this was just like a crazy idea, but it'd be interesting to sort of have like an old timers club and like you get a special badge or something for it and you could get swag with the uh, with the classic logo on it or something like that. Oh, wait, hold on. Oh my gosh, I was I was complaining about the Google and Thunderbird integration, and it really does suck because it just made my window disappear. Okay. Um, yeah, so that was another idea is having an old timers club, list old timers, maybe list people based on um, how long they've been in Fedora. I don't remember if we talked about, would it be 10 years or however many years? And then there could be a special fast group, and if you're in that group, then you get the cool old timers badge. And it's just something to, you know, Honestly, from like a UX perspective in community management, I think it's good to know who's been around a while and who hasn't, because then sort of you look to the helpers. If somebody's been around a long time, generally, not always, they kind of know things so that they can kind of help guide new people. So it's kind of useful for new contributors too to know 
hey, this person's been around for a long time. They might be better equipped to advise me than the blind reading the blind. Um, and then long term, so this is like I put 2022 20, beyond. Um, we could start picking off the contributor facing apps. So that's where we start looking at Koji and Bodhi and those types of apps. Because again, th those are contributors working with them. They know what Fedora is. They're aware. I I'm sure when it starts happening, there's a new logo. Okay, great. Oh, oops, sorry. Um, yeah, the, I'm telling you this Google Thunderbird integration does not work well. So if anybody tells you it works well, no. All right, so anyway, so that was sort of the timeline bits that I had to talk about. Um, and then does anybody have questions on the timeline or sort of rollout or, oh my God, you didn't think about X in terms of that? There were a couple of questions about whether we're going to have um, some specific designs. Um, a 404 page customized to look pretty by default. Um, I don't know what the what that looks like currently. I think it's just a very plain page. Um, and then also a pixel version of the logo, which I guess also goes with the um, terminal friendly version of the logo as well. Yeah, that's Whoa, not pretty. That's not even. That's crap. <laughs> I want to bring back a radioactive panda. I mean, I don't know if anybody has opinions on that, but I would like to see the radioactive panda make a return. Uh, it seems like there's a good a, place for the, it. There's a photo badge, error page, photo and photo badge, photo panda. So that would actually want to be a start to put them in there at least. What was that? I didn't catch it. It broke up. Uh, I said just that badge is for badge on four page. Oh, that's right. Okay, let's see. It's still there or no? Yeah, it's there. It's there. It's that's that's the one we can use oh, it on the pages as well. <laughs> we, at least that, at least that's to something to be useful. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's better than the one that is on Get Fedora right now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Badgers. Badges. .fpo. Yeah, we used to have one. I think it was on like the Fedora community app, and it had. The beefy miracle with a ray gun shooting a panda, and it had like a radioactive <laughs> symbol on the panda, and it had like the error code was on the Geiger counter or something. I don't know. Yeah. It was animated and it was fun. It would be nice to do something fun. Um, so yes, I like that idea. I will add that to the plan. Um, the pixel version, yeah, that is something that um, I guess that would go with the release stuff if we can get it in because it was. I don't, Matthew has been playing around with it more than I have, but there's like whatever um, tools you can use so you can get like a message of the day with the Fedora logo in it in the terminal. Um, we, we've had some people suggest different ANSI art Fedora logos using the new logo. So um, I think like a pixel art version of that could be nice too. So I'll, I'll add that to it. Um, is there any specific, and just note that I, well, I guess I could see the chat. If, hold on. I was like looking at my notes page. Does, does, is there a specific usage for the pixel version of the logo in mind that you had? Justin would like to build it in Minecraft. Um, so. Oh, okay. Would, okay. That, that's important. <laughs> if you have specific dimensions you need it in that would work best, let me know and I can, I can do that. I think having a pixel version is probably generally awesome for just a lot of swag options as well, because nice and nerdy. Right, right. Yeah. No, um, and, and I guess that maybe brings me to the next topic where I know that we've been sort of strict and inflexible a lot of times, and I know there's reasons for that too, but I want to be like a little bit more open. So like here, like the general, I, I'm, I kind of started with our current sub-logo guidelines for figuring out, and we have two sub-logo templates. We have one that's for teams, and we have one that's for apps. Um, and um, But the, the one for teams is basically, it doesn't have the word, it just has the mark. Here we go. So, it just has the mark design team and then the app has Fedora and then the name of the application. Now I'm kind of like shifting opinions on this as we go and as we convert things, I think that's okay. I don't think everything needs to be spelled out to the letter. I, I think we should be more flexible with things. So for example, with um, 
ask Fedora, I, I think it was important to have the Fedora, um, at least the word mark in it and have it explicitly say Fedora besides Ask Fedora, because I think that shows it's not just a website called Ask Fedora, it's sort of an officially sanctioned, like the Fedora project manages it. Um, so that's why I wanted the, the word mark in there. But, you know, I also like the way that discourse works, and, and I'm not going to go into a discourse rant, I promise, but um, they have very specific ways that they let you use the logo and like the space that you get for the logo is very small. So there isn't really an opportunity. Like if I just had the Fedora logo here and it said Fedora as Fedora, it's sort of not clear right away what is this thing. And then for example, when you have this tab icon here, I, I kind of want to move away from the world where I work on Fedora and I have all my tabs and all the icons is the Fedora logo and I can't tell the difference between like this is yeah. the wiki and this is spins and it's like, well, the point of the yeah. icon is to help me figure out which one. So That's I actually be my main bit... motivation in this request from this <laughs> particular site. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, and I want to be a little more flexible with that stuff. And like it is like there's a lot of reasons why we were conservative in that way. And I would say for me, the primary reason is that when you're making a new mark, there's an effort in that and it has to be handheld to make sure that it fits the style and everything. Like we don't want these things to just come out of nowhere or somebody grabs something that's off of open clip art and it's just not great. You know, like I just, I want there to be a good like high bar for these marks, but at the same time, like, I just want it to be a possibility. I don't think by default every sub logo should have its own custom mark. I think that we have to think about where it fits within everything. So like some properties of Asphodora is it's this website that um, is heavily advertised to new users. It's sort of the main point of support for folks. Um, it's something that um, has specific restrictions around how the app lets you work with it. Um, and I just, I, I think, the tab thing is is legit like it would be good for that tab to stand out as this is a place where I ask the questions so I think it kind of qualifies for having a custom mark I think we should play it by year for a while and see if other patterns emerge but like I'll tell you something else that when I was thinking through these things this is also the same pattern that we generally use for contributor focused apps like Koji let's say um and I think if somebody works on Fedora and they're going to Koji they know Koji is a Fedora app, so we don't need to specifically call out Fedora Koji. Like, we could just say, you know, this is Koji, and it could just be, like I showed the, uh, you know, part of this Fedora group idea, like part of the reasoning behind this is it's just the mark and the name of the team, because if you're on the Fedora design team, you know it's the Fedora design team. People don't need to spell out Fedora. Well, in the same way, if it's an internal app, like if it's a contributor focused app to build packages or manage them or manage updates, you know you're working on Fedora. It doesn't have to be spelled out. So I think you can get away with just the logo. You know what I'm saying? And I guess one one issue there, though, is that with some of these, we've kind of gone towards making a custom. Oh, I guess Koji doesn't have it. Maybe it's Bodhi has a custom logo. It does. But I think that's also helpful for the tab. Do you know what I'm saying? So I would say, I don't know, a lot of thought needs to be made here. But that's why I just wanted to point out that there's like a lot of, I want to be flexible and I want to be open with how we roll it out when we get to the point of rolling it out to contributor focused stuff. And as we start rolling it out to stuff that's focused on users, if that makes sense. Um, and I definitely don't want to be as strict as we have been. So. That's that's my little piece on sub logos. And then I guess the only other thing that might be worth showing is this is just sort of um, a little map I made of of where I kind of see that logo, the new logo kind of dropping into place. Um, the primary mark is always going to be this horizontal one. These vertical ones are really just, you know, if you only have that amount of space, use it. But really, we're considering this horizontal format one to be the primary mark. Um, and it doesn't you know, kind of makes my life easier, but it, it doesn't change the um, the additions much. It really is just the word mark just gets inserted there because the the text here is still using Montserrat. I'm not changing that. And we're not changing the dark blue color either. Um, yeah, so 
that's about all I have. I mean, if anybody has questions on any of this to answer them, I'll um, turn off the screen share so I can see people because talking into a black box is not fun. I have one more question. Uh, is there going to be any updates about the presentation slides templates? Because we have very old one and since logo is changing, so for speakers that will be nice to have a new template as well. Yeah, one sec. Hold on. Let me see if the um, let me see if it's still there. I was actually going to make slides for this presentation using it, um, but I got lazy and I'm like, you know what? I, I'm not going to make slides. But let me see. Back. Okay, here. Yeah. I actually have um, a repo that um, it uses these, this template right now, there's a repo for it on Pagor. It's something like Fedora dash presentation or something. Um, it has the new logo in it. I updated it to have, or I'm sorry, the one that's on Pagora right now has the old logo. I updated it to have the new logo. Um, I will push this to that repo today. I can do it after this meeting so you have it. So. And actually, I, I think it was um, I think it was Neil that requested this because he was going to give a talk, and we didn't really have a nice, consistent. Um... Oh wait, am, am I sharing it? I am, right? Okay. Yes, you are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he wanted like a nice looking template because we sort of had a whole bunch of different templates at the time and they all were weird in different ways. So this was sort of something that was started at the same time we were looking at doing the new logo. For that. I just have two questions to ask at the end here. Um, so one was just knowing that there's going to be things that just somehow we missed or forgot about. I'm just wondering how can the community best support or enable the work to either people find logos that are, are updated right away. I know that's feedback people will have. How do, how do we want to manage that or direct it when it comes up over? I have some crazy idea wonder, about that. Well, I was thinking that um, what we might want to do, because we do have, I mean, we have a written timeline that I kind of walked you guys through for most of this presentation. Um, what we may want to do, maybe like a little bit before F34 comes out, or like maybe right away, I don't know, just basically write up, you know, hey, we have the new logo, it is coming. Um, this is sort of our timeline for rolling it out, because it definitely wouldn't be helpful for people to be like, oh, well, Koji doesn't have the new logo yet, because we're not planning to do that until like, after F35, you know what I'm saying? And like, we're not in any rush, you know, um, where it would be right away super useful to the point that there might not even be a whole lot of time if people do find it, again, it's my fault, I will own that, is if there are bits in the OS where the old logo is lingering around, um, we want to fix that. Um, and we are, I will note that we are keeping the old logo in the package we are just underscoring classic to it so that if packagers still need the old logo for whatever reason, it's available in the package, at least for a time. Um, yeah. I so. wonder if maybe we should set up like a special pagger tracker just for reporting these things. Um, and that could have like the timeline at the top version of it. And then if somebody wants to report Koji, that's fine. It gives them a place to, and we can, we can, we can say as loud as we want, don't do this, but people are going to notice it and want to report it. And that way they'll at least be able to see that it's being tracked. Um, okay. And then well, if they do cool. find, other, find other things, they could do that Matthew, as well. Matthew, we can also, I have a, some nice idea. Yeah, let's we hear can, your crazy idea. Yeah, we can, uh, let's just say we push the new logo and we start uh, showing around and changing the stuff we're supposed to change. And we could, and Mary, and anyone can miss some. So for that, we can create some sort of a fun gamified bug hunting-ish stuff. So if somebody found any logo and report first to the, the specific ticket, we can reward them with badge and also replace the logo we're supposed to be. So we can have more interactive and gamify stuff. So that will be actually fun to have some badges, how many uh, bug you found in the design about the old logo. So you can basically report it and get some points. So it can be some 
uh, stuff, but people actually more have nice time with that, I believe. That's my idea on that. Gamifying is always a good stuff. Um, Mo, do you think it would be better to have them file in the normal design tracker or actually set up a separate tracker for it? Because we could, I mean, you could just make a new logo tag in there, but I'm kind of worried about it. I think it a separate logo or a, a separate logo tracker might be better because, and then what we could do is set up milestones in the tracker, mm -hmm. which would conflict with the design team milestones, which is why I think a separate repo for it would be better. And then we could do sort of a F34, F35, beyond F35 milestones. And then as the bugs come in, we can sort of tag them with the milestone that they were in the plan. And if we didn't have them in the plan, we could determine what the timeline is and then tag them with that. So that could kind of serve as our list. Um, one caution I would say is that um, sort of like the ink doesn't dry on everything until we've been using the new logo for 12 to 18 months, at which point it's sort of like, okay, this is a thing. Because again, I'm not gonna go into detail, but something could happen within the next 12 to 18 months as we use the logo that, you know, maybe we have to rethink it or change it or something because it hasn't been fully approved, you know, as it's been filed as a trademark. Like we haven't gotten, you know, it takes, you're sitting in a queue, it has to be approved, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, if they come back and say, well, we have a concern about this, you need to change this or you need to roll it back entirely. So that's why we don't really want to be rushing, change it everywhere because then it will make more work if something happens. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there too. So it might be like a little demotivating, like, oh, well, I found this old logo, but it's still the old logo, you know? So I don't know. That's the only caveat I would have around that stuff. One thing I discovered after like, I don't know, a month of back and forth about this with legal, um, from their point of view, us having like Fedora 7 on the web for download counts as it still being in use. Um, and so, um, the amount of um, we still have to we, we were really concerned we would maybe have to like I was talking about even making like a Fedora classic spin that would kind of showcase it. And uh, but we don't have to go to those kind of lengths because just having it like the old logo is is always going to be in use. Um, in fact, the logo from from that point of view, the logo from before the current logo is still actually in use by the project um, if it comes to that. <laughs> so that at least is not a big concern, which is um, a relief to me, even though it kind of would have been fun to make a Fedora Classic logo with FVWM95. So maybe Classics. then, since there was some, like I think a Pagor repo might be a good home for that, just because I definitely see people who, even if you tell them not to, you know, it just happens. People want, <laughs> yeah. they want a place to see that their request is something's happening, something's happening. So that might be a cool thing. My second question actually that kind of builds on that is I've, I've always, I love the wiki documentation that's there for the brand guidelines. It's an amazing example for me as someone who's not primarily a designer just to understand how these things work. My question is, have we thought or has there been any thought about maybe if we set up a new repository about moving that content to the Fedora Docs website at maybe not Fedora 34, but just down the line? Um, maybe adding that into the roadmap. Are there any, has that been a thought or anything like that? Over. Yeah, um, I have definitely been thinking about that. Um, and I, I, to the point that I've started learning ASCII doc and used it in other projects too. So I'm kind of getting more familiar with it. Um, the only thing that I would say on that though, is that um, I'm, I'm trying to be like flexible and a little bit organic as we roll it out and like different usages of the logo have different needs. So I don't want to like dictate a one size fits all type thing. So I kind of want to be a little slow in rewriting the guidelines. I'm, I'm like starting at the gate, sticking to them as they are written with the new marks, but then as different situations arise, trying to be more flexible. So that'll probably cause some changes to the guidelines. And the reason that those guidelines right now still say their draft is, um, I think it, it was something to do with like communication with the legal team. And I don't, I don't remember if, I don't think there was ever any concerns with them as they were written. I think they just were never given a final review and an okay. And I just didn't feel safe removing the draft, which is just why it's there. So I, I hope this would also be an opportunity to have that team 
once we have the initial new draft done, have them actually rubber stamp it so we can take the draft status off. But yeah, yeah, that's definitely something that has been thought of. Awesome. And if the docs team can support, that's definitely something Peter, he, I can't pronounce his last name. Peter is something, he's got those template repos to help out with the bootstrapping. We can definitely find some folks to help out with that when, when the time okay. is right. Keep okay, us in great. the loop. But that was all the questions I had. Um, any other questions? Getting to the end of the hour here. I've been working with Mo like a lot on this, so I don't have very many questions. Uh, I don't even know what questions might be asked. Um, but uh, if you do have more, you know where the design team is to be found. So uh, please to bring them there. Now? To our viewers now, um, we can tell them. Um, we can put some links in when we when we uh, publish this video um, and. You know, uh, Fedora design team, um, the primary home for that really is um, the, the HyperKitty mailing list and the Pagger repo where all the issues are tracked. Alexandra, we, you have a question. Can, can we start a thread, for example, on discussions Fedora project org to like ask community for ideas for the sub logos for various Fedora apps? Like bring your Brainstorm stuff, just just randomly through through in whatever you think the Koji representation should be in this in this form, and then like use it as a as a basis. What do you think would it work? Well, we're not really positioned to do that yet. That's sort of a post F35 timeframe type of thing. Because right now, I mean, I'm already sort of beyond my capacity in terms of getting just yeah, uh, stuff but 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 into it's, the it's, but so it's not I, I don't... For, for you to do the work, right? It, it's it's just for a community to play with the idea, to try to come up with various, whatever crazy associations they have with the different services. Yeah, I just think it's a little premature at this point, though, because I don't want to okay. set up expectations that, oh, you're going to come up with something and then it's just going to work, because I want everything to be sort of very carefully, um, be very thoughtful about sort of the just sort of the visual continuity between the different marks that are produced. So that's why I'd really like to just kind of follow the timeline that's set. And then as we start, like as new requests up, deal with them, which, you know, again, like easy fix, ask, and um, the, the discourse site are like some that have started to come up. And as they come up, sort of figure out what are the different principles here? What are the different aspects that kind of change how we might do a mark how does that mark you know and just sort of organically build up a library of marks that have been very deliberate and considerate um and then once we have sort of that library of marks to look at once we get to the point and I, i'm assuming it'll be past f35 that we start looking a little bit more inward looking at those apps like koji and bodhi we'll have a library of really um nicely and carefully designed marks already that then folks could look to as a model to follow. You know what I mean? Like it's sort of like a whole visual library of things that will work. So they'll have a lot more to work with. I think that if you started at this point and you tried to come up with marks, like I think you could probably start brainstorming concepts, but to actually render the marks, you don't really have a lot to go on because we haven't built up that. Yeah, I, I was yet. thinking, you know, in the direction of a less serious thing. I was just think, like, imagine people on Twitter when you 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 come with the range of these sub sub logos uh, to them, and they will try to create me memes from from this, like pre, <laughs> do it just for fun, not not for actual things. But it, you may be right; it's it's like worth doing it slightly after we establish the main main trend, so it will be more visible and more like seen from from that work. Yeah, right. Like somebody yeah. shared a cat version of our logo on on Reddit recently. That's that's been all of the old one or the new one. Of the, of the old one. So. That was a that oh, okay. was a cute one. <laughs> yeah, it's a, a yeah. cute. Um, yeah. Cat well, I mean, the other thing is like I don't know, logo. like. As the maintainer of the logo, like 
I don't know how far I can get into that stuff and have it appear like an official, like I'm fine if people want to have fun, that's cool. But like, I also don't want to Because cause... you'll have to ruin it, right? That's, yeah. Yeah, I, and I also don't want to cause any kind of confusion as to like, well, Mo laughed at that, so that's approved. We could, like, I don't, I don't want to get into that. But I do appreciate fun memes and I think people right. should do them yeah. without officially approving them. <laughs> The meme seg may need to operate outside of the actual Fedora project for its own good. Yeah. But, but, but yeah, I mean, again, less, like when we do these things, should... when we do these things, I like doing them in the open. Um, Typically that is in the design ticket queue, but, um, you know, every now and then I will, like if a bunch of us are thinking about a mark, it, it might become a Twitter thread to like, what do you think about this? Go to this Pagor ticket. Um, the other thing that I wanted to do that I, I kind of got the idea from um, JWF is to do like a community blog post, this is coming. And then I think from that, because it auto links to discussions, then that would also start a thread on discussions. So it will sort of be in sync. Um, and we could kind of just give people a heads up that this is coming, set up that repo, which I think is a great idea. Um, and maybe seed it with some of the stuff from the timeline that we already have written up so people kind of can see just from what's already there, the level of what we're looking for. Um, I think that might be good too, and it might give people a heads up. So and I, I don't think it's gonna be shocking. I, people are familiar with this logo. They've seen it before. It's been over two years in the making, um, but maybe they didn't know that F34 was when we were planning to have it come out. So having that little soft heads up might help too in terms of like, people being shocked or whatever and they can feel like you know we're listening to them and that they can have a discussion about it on the discourse so all right um people in the chat are also talking about um telegram stickers and i know uh, uh we are talking with matrix element about sticker a sticker fedora sticker set um once that's ready to go i think it looks like for telegram you can actually just add them from a certain like put them in a certain format of a link and anybody can add them. I'm not quite sure how well, this we, all works. We already have meme, tic, meme, meme stickers and also federal stickers as well in some sticker packs. So it's already yeah. out there. Well, Not officially, but somebody actually do that. That is something that if people have ideas for sort of like um, poses, I, I don't even know what you would call like the individual poses in a sticker pack, right? But if people wanted to brainstorm that right away and come up with like a list, that would be super helpful at that stage, be, or at this stage, because right now we have an intern who is working on some amazing redesigns of the Fedora character family. You know, you have the panda, the badger, beefy. There's a few other sort of supporting actor characters. Um, and she's sort of revamping them so they have like they're all sort of the same family and have the same visual style and everything. And like I've seen early sketches and they look amazing. So I could totally see doing each of the Fedora characters in a series of um, those poses for a sticker set. And I did actually um, I, I'm in the process of because this intern was supposed to do a 12 week stint that she's halfway through and we were able to extend her an internship towards the end of the summer. So she'll actually have time in the summer to maybe work on a sticker pack as her next awesome um, chunk of work. So I would love to see that, but we need to know like, well, what are the poses we're going to do? So if people have specific poses they'd like to see, you know, I'd love to see that come from the community. Awesome. Okay. We are at the hour here. So thank you again. Uh, this is great. And I'm really excited about this coming to reality. See you next month, everybody, on the video and, you know, on the Internet in the meantime. Bye.